by a show of raise of hands, how many people have been to Africa here? Whoa! <laughs> uh, quite a few, huh? Um, so, in recent years, um, Africa and its diaspora has captivated people um, all around the world uh, from its growth and its investment opportunities. Um, it's it's blown people away and made waves um, everywhere. I know you all saw Black Panther, right? <laughs> and all the records it broke in Hollywood. Africa also won the 2018 World Cup for France, right? <laughs> in light of all this momentum, I always get the question, What's next for Africa? Uh, so by 2050, one out of every four people in the world will be African. One out of every four. And by this time, nine countries will account for half of the world's population growth. Okay? And most of them are in Africa. So me, as a competitive business mind, I look at all this uh, potential, whether it's real estate uh, or entertainment uh, or technology. Um, and I've just come to realize that the most significant opportunity for socioeconomic growth influencing all of these industries is sports. My name is Masai Ujiri. Um, I think of myself sometimes as a philanthropist, an activist, a basketball junkie, a sports junkie, and the president of the Toronto Raptors. And when I'm asked what's next, I believe that sports and the business of sports is the biggest opportunity for the next generation of Africa. So I started playing basketball when I was 13 years old. And um, I was fortunate to go to school in the States. And I played professional, professionally for, in Europe uh, for six years. I wasn't very good. In my quest to, uh, to find a new career in coaching, I found scouting. And uh, I went from being an unpaid scout uh, to get into the position that I am now. And now I understand that Africa's greatness is in its people, the talent of its people. And when I traveled around the world and was scouting, I just discovered how talented like Africans are in sports, so in Senegal or Sudan, how long they are, or the strength of Nigerians, Cameroonians, Congolese, or I know you guys have seen Kenyans run, the East Africans. Uh, this talent is unbelievable, and when I started Giants of Africa, my foundation, um, I came to realize that I had to do camps. Um, and I had a big man camp, all seven footers. And one time, a kid shows up from eastern Nigeria. He drove 14 hours to come to camp. He gets to camp, and we had already selected for camp. And he said to us, um, I need to be in this camp, but we were already full. He ended up begging his way to being selected and he started playing and he says, are we allowed to stuff? Can we stuff? I'm thinking, what the hell is stuff? He meant dunk. <laughs> so apparently where he plays in his community, he's not allowed to stuff because the rims are not very shaky and he's not allowed to dunk. Anyway. This kid ends up being selected for Basketball Without Borders. 
and goes to school in Seton Hall and plays professionally in Europe. And in my mind, I wonder, what if his gift was not discovered? Okay? And when I look at greats, I'm going to show you some of them. I look at Pele from Brazil, Kipchoge from Kenya, the great Akim Olajuwon from Nigeria, Serena, one of the greatest athletes in the world, right? <laughs> and LeBron James. <laughs> People always ask me if he's African. I mean, because of his physique, right? So what I'm trying to tell you guys is there are so many people, so many in Africa walking around, walking around like it's normal that are athletes like this overlooked with no opportunity. Think about the tribes that have all people that are six foot eight and over. Think about the tribes, the Igbo tribes that are stocky and strong all like these guys with no opportunity, no facilities, no coaching. When you look at the African people also, they're also unbelievable, brilliant minds and STEM, visionaries and creatives, okay? In Africa, we have not yet been exposed to the other side of sports. We haven't, not at all. We have to open our minds to the possibilities and opportunities of sports outside of the game. I'm the prime example of that. I have another example. An engineer that works with us, with Giants of Africa, grew up playing basketball. And he took the game as far as he went, as far as he could, and he decided to study mechanical engineering. He started making uprights and basketball rims. And now, in Nigeria, he makes world-class uprights that's accessible all over the continent. So a few years ago, I used to battle with buying or trying to buy $15,000 basketball rims and uprights, sending them to Nigeria, shipping costs, and it being stuck in custom for how long? I have to bribe a few people to get it out. My point to you guys is there is a place in sports for intellectuals, a big place in sports. So when I look at Generation Z and social media and them being born into technology and mass information sharing, I know that they have to make the change. They have to break barriers. They have to open borders. To put this in perspective to you guys, 60%, 60% of the population of Africa is 25 years and under. I think I have that slide here. Think about that. Imagine what it's going to be 20 to 30 years from now. So, it's not all about scouting or finding this talent. There is a socioeconomic ecosystem that the business of sports creates 
that includes just about every trade, every single trade under the sun. You don't have to be su successful in sports by just being an athlete, okay? You can be way more than that, way more than that. And my goal, and a lot of people's goals, is to create an ecosystem that can thrive on the continent of Africa. So, look at this picture. That's the national stadium in Nigeria. Okay? It's unkept. It's been like that for 30 years. Disorganized. Dirty. I hate to say it like that, but I have to call some people out. And it bothers me. It bothers me that it's been the same way even before, even after I left the country. We have every one of this in almost every country in Africa. Now take a look at this. Imagine this. It even gives me goosebumps to look at it and to see the kind of opportunity that kids can have and youth. Stadiums, arenas, hotels, restaurants, playgrounds. So many things that can change lives. We have to challenge ourselves. We really have to challenge ourselves. It really gives me goosebumps. It does. It makes, sometimes it makes me want to cry because I know, I know what Africans have. I know what talent there is. And I know what brilliant minds there are uh, on the continent. And we have to break, we have to break these roadblocks these political roadblocks, these barriers that stop us from progressing sometimes. And I know it's possible because when I started my camps 10 years ago or 15 years ago, I did my camps for 10 straight years in Nigeria, 10 straight years. And then they frustrated me for a couple things and I decided to go to, um, to Kenya my mom's country, I found out how cool and how easy when you want to make contact with people and um, open these barriers and build a network and learn other people's culture and how well you are received by these people. It wasn't that hard. And so, when I think of this and where we can go and the support that we can get from institutions like FIBA, like the NBA, FIFA, all these institutions can give us some kind of support to build some kind of standard of competition so we can see our athletes perform on the continent and we can grow our own athletes on the continent and develop them. By the way, if this all doesn't work out, I'll just get all this talent and bring them to the Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> when you invest in sports, you have to understand, you invest in so many things, tourism, real wage employment, real estate development, jobs, jobs. You create jobs for people. I can't wait till it's like that in Africa. I really, really can't wait because it is going to get there someday. It really is. And it's going to be big business big business that you can't imagine. 
The NCA generated $1.1 billion this year. The Premiership, I know you guys follow the Premiership, $2.42 billion revenue. The MBA, $7.4 billion in revenue. This is big time. As we continue to think about this, we have to think now, and we have to think future. We have to think about this generation and how we help our kids. Because sports brings people together, okay? has a unique way of bringing people together. It gives us a sense of hope, pride, joy, a place for refuge. Take a look at this court. We just built this court in northern Kenya in Alego. It shows the culture of our people, a passion. I love looking at it because it looks at everywhere in Africa. I have to develop the continent. And when I see the perception of Africa being always poverty and propaganda, a lot of times it bothers me. I have to provoke these new leaders and innovative thinkers to know that there's a vibrant Africa, there's an unbelievable culture, there are investments, there are business opportunities, and most importantly, there are people. There are people that are waiting for us. I talk about basketball so much uh, because this is my domain, um, but this is inclusive in all sports, every single sport that can be played on the continent of Africa. What can we do to help? How can we get involved? You can get involved by investing in grassroots, by encouraging young girls and women, by hiring the right people and appointing the right people over there, by encouraging the private sector to invest in sports in Africa. I always imagine, what if we could build 100 courts or 100 fields in every single country in Africa? What would come out of that? What if, what if we could get them a million balls for every sport that uses a ball? What if we had an NCA Africa? What would it be like? Imagine what it would be like with all these athletes. It'd be unbelievable. There are many things that we have to do, and they're not that difficult. Not that difficult. We have to hire experts, appoint experts, okay? When we do our cabinet reshuffles, don't put the Minister of Agriculture to become the Minister of Sports. He doesn't know shit about sports. <laughs> he doesn't. Give the youth a chance. Give the next generation a chance. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, listen to me. It's time to be curious about Africa. It's time. Pay attention, okay? I know this audience might not really uh, be involved, but pay attention. Really pay attention, especially business minds. We're not looking for charity anymore in Africa. We're not looking for aid. We're looking for investors. We're looking for people that will create the next generation. I used to think, and I used to say, that Africa is going to be great. And I hope 
that I'm alive when it happens. I've come to realize now, I've realized that Africa is now. Thank you very much and thank you for listening to me. Thank you.